Good morning. Welcome to St. Augustine's Parish as we celebrate the third Sunday in Ordinary Times. This morning, celebrant is Father Figueroa, assisted by Deacon John Barbera. Today's Mass is for the intentions of our parishioners and benefactors and Luigi Assoli. Please rise as we sing our processional song, All Creatures of Our God and King, number 549, number 549. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephtadi, but in the end he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwell in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people who make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their testmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel and not with the wisdom of human elegance, as that the cross of Christ may not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light, and those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along, and there he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The gospel of the Lord. With today's Holy Gospel, we see the beginning phases of Christ's public ministry. And as we see this, rea- and as we see this reality take form, we are reminded that our church began with just a few simple, humble apostles whom Jesus called. Simple fishermen who Jesus would transform by his grace into fishers of men. We can learn so much from the calling of the apostles. We see how Christ enters into the midst of their daily lives. These men were having an ordinary day doing their usual work out on the sea. Yet our Lord interrupts this work to offer them an extraordinary invitation. The invitation is to follow him and become new types of fishermen, fishers of souls. Our Lord calls two sets of brother, brothers, Peter and Andrew, as well as James and John. The response is the same all around. The gospel says that Peter and Andrew, at once, they left their nets and followed him. As for James and John, we are told that they immediately left their boat and their father and followed him. There was a promptness to their response, and there was a spirit of sacrifice involved. They were leaving their secure lives as fishermen and even leaving their families in order to follow Jesus. There was a great unknown of what was to come, but they did not hesitate in joining the Son of God and proclaiming the gospel to the nations. Indeed, it would be the word of God that they would now use as their nets to catch and restore mankind back to God. Repent and believe, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We see Christ begin his public ministry by picking up where St. John the Baptist left off. When John the Baptist spoke these words, it was in preparation for the Messiah But now as Christ speaks these words, they are in the present, for the Messiah has arrived and the kingdom of heaven is being ushered in. Thus the urgency for repentance, for a true turning back to God, was now upon the world. Now in this passage, we only hear of four apostles being called, yet we know that there were 12 whom Christ called. Twelve is such an important number in the sacred scriptures. There were twelve sons of Jacob who formed the twelve tribes of Israel. 
And now, as the Messiah is with us, the kingdom must go beyond the Holy Land and be spread to all the nations. For this reason, he chose 12 apostles to head this new spiritual Israel, the church. It would be the church's mission to continue Christ's work on earth in gathering mankind back to the Father. You see, throughout the ages, mankind has continuously fallen away from God. Sin and division always go hand in hand. This is why St. Paul urges the Corinthians to let there be no divisions among them in the second reading. It is always the plan of the evil one to divide and conquer the children of God, but is always the work of God to unite and restore his children back to himself. Sin and division have plagued our world from of old. In fact, at the time of Christ, the 12 tribes of old were no longer united. They had been divided by exiles and wars. Of those 12 tribes, the first two that had been ravaged by the Assyrian invasion centuries before Christ were the two that we hear about today, Zebulon and Naphtali. You see, Christ lived in Capernaum, the town in which Zebulon and Naphtali intersect. Christ was not in Capernaum by accident. He was there so that he could begin the work of restoration, reconciling at the root where the division in the tribes first began. He was there to bring about a reversal, to undo the damage of division and to be a light to those in darkness and the shadow of death. It was here in these same regions that our Lord called his first apostles. Even though the apostles were poor and uneducated, imperfect and weak, Christ chose them. Really, it's in our weakness that the power of Christ is manifested because his grace perfects our nature and his grace always transcends our human weakness. Despite their lack of intellectual knowledge, the apostles had a tremendous spiritual sense. They knew that the kingdom of God was worth sacrificing for. They show us that his kingdom is worth sacrificing everything for, not only all that we have, but also all that we desire. It's worth sacrificing for because the greater the sacrifice, the greater the reward. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he will always exceed our expectations when we give him our trust and follow him. The apostles show us that those who hold on to spiritual things will be lifted up by them while those who hold on to earthly things will be brought down by them. What I mean by that is we must keep our eyes on the heavenly and not get too distracted by the things of this world. This is why the apostles were able to follow Christ without hesitation. They were not weighed down by the things of this world. Now the apostles also show us that the Lord looks at the heart and not at superficial attributes. Again, if Christ was looking for the smartest, the strongest, the most popular, he would not have picked the men that he did. Instead, our Lord chose men with sincere and generous hearts. He chose men with charity who would be faithful even to their own death. He chose men who would be his light in the darkness of this world. And so the Lord looks at you and looks at me, and he asks us also to be his light in the darkness of this world. He asks you and he asks me to help him in this work of restoration. Like the apostles, he asks you and me to use both his holy word and our holiness of life 
as a net to catch and lead souls back to him. As Christ called the apostles in the midst of their work, so too does he call you and me, and his timing is always perfect. May we therefore be people who are always attentive, docile, and cooperative with his call. And like the apostles, may we follow him wherever he leads us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. especially in our archdiocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the sake of our parish, especially John D. Chiera, Ada Martinez Vargas, Joanna Ciracella, Anna Milo, Chris Slattery, Manuel Ardsty, Terry Beresford, Angela Separano, and Maria Reynolds, that they may receive God's strength and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have died, Madonna Cavalieri, Francis Leader, Nancy Fochi, and Virginia Stewart, and especially for all our parishioners and benefactors and Luigi Asalone, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for stronger marriages and families, for those in single life, for a greater respect for all human life, for the intentions in our book of petitions, and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help us that we may respond lovingly to the gospel message and grant our prayers according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join the choir in singing the offertory hymn, Shepherd of Souls, number 362. 362.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his, your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien and all your saints. We ask that through the merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Just a couple of minutes of your time. The older I get, the more time seems to fly by. Seems like we've just celebrated Christmas and now we're preparing for Lent. I always know when we start preparing for Lent because the Cardinal sends most of us a letter about his yearly Cardinal's appeal. I was amazed to find out that some of the parishioners have already received the letter and already made donations. At least six families have already made donations to the Cardinal's Bill. I haven't gotten my letter yet, but I'm sure it's on its way. Each year around the time of Lent, the Cardinal asks all of the parishes to help contribute towards the charitable works of the diocese that don't have income of their own. Our parishioners are very generous in supporting our parish, but this is a way we reach outside of ourselves to assist in some of the charitable works of the diocese, helping to support poor parishes that can't pay their bills, or helping to support our retired priests at the retirement home. Sometimes we know we would like to do acts of charity, but we can't. We can't always volunteer at homeless shelters or at soup kitchens, but if we contribute to the Cardinal's Appeal, we know that someone will be there representing us to do those types of things. So all of our registered parishioners eventually should be getting a letter before Lent begins from the Cardinal with an envelope in it for your Cardinal's Appeal for 2023. Seems like we're still paying off 2022, but Lent is coming. If you don't have an envelope, they'll be at the table towards the entrance of the church, and eventually they'll make their ways into the pews so that throughout Lent we'll have the constant reminder of our responsibility to do extra works of charity for those that we can't always reach personally, but to always recognize the generosity of our parish, not only in taking care of our parish itself, taking care of the diocese, and through our second collections, taking care of charities throughout this world. So as we prepare for Lent, which is coming sooner than we realize, may we always be aware of the body of Christ that is alive and well and our responsibilities towards it. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Just one other announcement before we conclude today. Uh, I do invite all parishioners uh, for a little treat. Uh, you'll find as you exit the church this morning in the vestibule, we have two tables there. One with the Knights of Columbus offering free coffee and donuts for all. Uh, and then also uh, beside that we have on the other side uh, the St. Augustine gift card table. So please do check out that table as well to help support St. Augustine's school. Let us pray. Grant we pray almighty God that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in God. Be our protection against the wickedness of the sins. May God rebuke and be humble in prayer. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, and out of the world, seeking the ruined souls. Amen. Please join the choir in our recessional hymn, All Praise and Glad Thanksgiving, number 709. Number 709.